Cheers, everybody. We made it. So, as you can see, I got new toys. Um, yeah, everybody that's on Instagram and Facebook already knows about this new piece of everything. This Ferrari that I am literally sitting in front of right now. And words cannot describe that this was, this was just way long overdue for what I have. Um... It, it, it's crazy. I, I still cannot believe that I have this thing. It's it's nuts. It really is. I, I know I said it in a, in a few videos ago here on YouTube that I was planning on doing something like this. But now that this dream has become a reality, it's, it's crazy. It really is. Um, never in a million years would I think that I have a full-fledged studio. Like, this isn't anything crazy by all means i mean it is to me <laughs> for sure but this is wow wow it's here it is literally here and yeah <laughs> yeah it's here um well shoot go ahead and check out the before and afters real quick But yeah, as you can see, there's just so much more room. I, I feel that I can finally breathe. And I said that before in many of my videos. Um, I have room to stretch. And the cool thing with this specific setup is this setup will grow. It'll grow with me. I'm not saying it's going to grow right in a second. But yeah, this specific desk itself will grow and it will grow with you as a producer, as a musician, as whatever you want to do with it. Um, the desk I'm sitting in front of is the onstage stands uh, workstation WS700, 750, I don't know, something like that. I was a little skeptical about buying it because I was literally buying it blind. I've seen some bad reviews with the, the stability of it uh, where people noticed it was kind of rocking a little bit. So far as, as I set it up, I haven't dealt with that. I have zero issue. I To me, it's it's very sturdy. Um, but also getting that desk, I was able to expand on my outboard gear. As you can see, now I'm starting to develop um, a rack system. And to me, they're, they're not entry level to me. But as I start getting more experience, obviously, I'm going to start getting more and more things. Um, but yeah, I'm running the, the Furman uh, power conditioner, the uh, ART Pro VLA2, which is a compressor. And then down here, I have the Behringer uh, Pro XL compressor, limiter, and de-esser, which is going to be awesome when I finally get everything dialed in, which is why I'm not talking through a microphone today. Um, I have yet to get everything fully set up where... There's no hiccups in my audio. Um, but yeah, over here, we end up upgrading from the uh, Aries 3.5 inches to the Aries 5's um, XT series. Yeah. Holy crap, what a difference. Um, it, it is freaking nuts. And I'm in an apartment, so I don't have to keep the volume up at all. It's, it's actually on my volume knob. It's very minimal. It's crazy how loud these suckers are. But it's not just loudness. It's it's crisp. It's more crisp. Um, and, and I'm running also. I picked up the Personas Monitor Station uh, V2. You can't really see it too well, but it is a um, just a monitor station where I can hook up multiple studio monitors and switch between the two of them so I can AB it. Actually, I can ABC it because there's three inputs or three outputs. I'm sorry. But yeah, it's, it's crazy. Um, but yeah, the, 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 the Aries 3.5s 
in comparisons to the the XT series of the Personas, they're both the same brand speakers. But holy crap, these pack a punch. The the freaking <laughs> the five inchers. It it's nuts. It really is nuts. But it's also awesome to be able to listen to both ends of the spectrum as well. Um, and oh, also end up getting the Aston Spirit microphone. This is cool. It's shock mounted. This is my first condenser microphone. That's yeah, probably going to shoot up to the space, but yeah. Yeah, this guy's my first condenser. And there's a funny story with this guy. So I bought this. All this stuff is by, from Sweetwater. Um, but I've never bought used equipment. So I was skeptical. Um, they're... Their uh, sales engineers hooked me up and got me a great deal on this microphone. Normally, it's a several several hundred dollar microphone. I end up paying a little over a hundred bucks for it, and it's it's uh, it's awesome. It has um, gain reduction. You can change the polar pattern on it. You can even take out the uh, the bass fall off on it. It's great, but I I couldn't get this guy set up for the first couple days because I was excited and wasn't paying attention to my routing, and Obviously, you guys see me in front of the, the Shure SM7B. Actually, it's this guy right here. Here's a funny story why this guy's in the box, too. But, yeah. So I get this thing set up. And I'm not getting any sort of signal whatsoever. And I have the basic understanding of how to work a compressor, how to work at least the outboard gear that I got. But I sat there and I'm like, what is going on? I was I was pissed. Because I was, I was so looking forward to having this microphone, not necessarily used, but owning it brand new and expanding on my, my microphone collection. And I was pissed. I was like, what the heck? The Sweetwater sales engineers assured me that this was in perfect condition. It was used, but it was in perfect condition. And I'm just like, okay, well, it's not perfect because it's not working. Ultimately, um... I end up calling their tech support line, and the issue is, is that I was running the Shure SM7B before this. I threw this microphone on the boom, and the Shure SM7B is very gain heavy, so it requires a cloud lifter. And those of you guys that are in the audio engineering world would know the reasoning's better than I would at this current moment. I just know it requires it. So I was running this this microphone through the cloud lifter, through the routing that I have to go through all my equipment and ultimately out through my, my interface. It wasn't working. I was getting scared because I was like, oh my God, I just, I, I spent a ton of money and I invested a lot into this setup. I didn't want one hiccup. Well, the hiccup happened to be on my end because you can't run a condenser microphone through a cloud lifter. You get no sound. <laughs> and... Ultimately, I was relieved that that was the issue and I didn't have to get sent back because now I, I can work this. But yeah, I was so upset, but I felt like an idiot at the same time that it was all it was was one of my pieces of equipment that didn't belong in the in the audio line. Um, even more of an idiot. So the Shure SM7B, my very first baby micro baby of a microphone. This is my pride and joy of a microphone. So in the midst of my teardown, I was an idiot. I had the um, an adapter. Here. Had a uh, adapter to fit the boom. Kind of like this little gold piece right here. It just fits right inside of a uh, microphone to fit certain smaller threads. Well, the one that came with the Shure, I don't know if you can see that. But there are notches on an adapter, so that way you can take it off. And this one's on both sides. The one on the Shure has a, the notches only on one side. I mounted this adapter backwards, and I couldn't get it off because I wanted to use my Shure extender to attach to the boom. That was one of my other toys, just a little... Um, quality of life type deal, um, just to, just to have on there. 
And then also to, um, I end up picking up some uh, other mic stands, just little desktop mic stands, just to have my microphones on display when something's not on the boom. And just to keep it here and just keep everything nice and neat. But again, I was an idiot and mounted this adapter backwards and I couldn't get it out. Ultimately, I ended up ruining the threads on it. And even if I gave up on it, I couldn't remount it because the threads got trashed because I tried brute, for brute forcing this thing off the microphone. So I am now waiting for a replacement um, nut, mounting nut, and it should be here within the next day or so. But yeah, don't do that. Make sure you pay attention. But yeah, that was that was my idiot move. But other than that, everything has so far been seamlessly put together. I love it. I'm, I'm still working on the cable management thing. Um, that one's, that's my eyesore. I, now I see the cables. This one, this desk itself doesn't really have a good cable management system or it doesn't have the cable management system whatsoever. Um, so yeah, it's a lot of cable ties and, um, yeah, so... I'm, I'm trying to get as creative as I can with it, but ultimately it's just, it's an awesome setup. I love it. <laughs> I literally feel like I went from a hatchback to a Ferrari, which is cool. Um, everything just flows perfectly. It's, I have room. Ultimately at the end of the day, I have room and it's awesome. But yeah, we're, we're looking to step up the game a little bit. Oh, I'm on spring break now too. Um, end up finishing month five at my school. Uh, well, it's really my, yeah. Anyways, it was music theory, and oh my god, did that course kick my ass. I, yeah, it, it, was, it was tough. It was very tough. It was not coasting whatsoever. Uh, it was actually in the middle of week, middle of week two is when I was just beyond frustrated and was so over the class. It, it it was rough. And to be honest with you, I ended up finishing out with a B. And I was I, I was butthurt for the fact that I didn't get an A in it. But at the same time, I feel that I gave it the best shot that I could. Um, it was... A lot of the concepts in there was way over my head. Um, and the best way I could tell it to you is um, within this music theory class. So, you're learning how to read music at its basic level, and for me, it's a skill that I never paid attention or even had the desire to learn. Out of all the years that I've been doing music, it's just something I never wanted to do. So, the best way I can explain it to people that's not in the music world is the equivalent to, like, writing a story. So, I can write a story. And if you read this story, it sounds amazing. Well, you know, figuratively. But it'll sound good. Or it'll read good. And you'll enjoy the story. I get that same story back. The one that I wrote. And you ask me to read it? Oh, I can't read it. <laughs> That's pretty much how it is, is. I can write you the music. It'll sound great. Do I... can If it was put out into any sort of notation? No. I wouldn't know where to start. Well, I would now. I can read at the equivalent of a kindergartner at this point. But, yeah, it was tough. It was very tough. Uh, it's, I don't know. It, it, this class was just not clicking in my head. I feel that I gave it my my all. And I guess at the end of the day, that's that's all that matters. But it, it was, yeah. I feel like that I could have I could have done more with it. And that's that's my downfall is if I had more time because these classes are a month long. Out of all classes for them to stick me through and just kind of shotgun us through, I feel that music theory was probably one of the ones that I really wish was at a slower pace to really get a good grasp of it. Because um, ultimately, I understand that music theory can help out in a lot of circumstances. Do I know it's like fullest potential of knowing theory? No, I do not. Again, because music theory is not something that I, I paid attention to ever. Um, but, yeah, I, I feel that it would be a skill just in general for the class just to 
really hone into. Um, I know that we're we're only here for two and a half years uh, for online students, that is. But, yeah, music theory, I, I really think that should be a longer course, or at least broken down a little bit more Barney style, at least for me. <laughs> yeah, because I was... I was lost in the sauce, and I'm hoping that this does not hinder me in the next upcoming classes. But yeah, other than that, in a nutshell, we are put together, we are up and running, we are ready to make some music, and I am so excited for everything that happens after this. I think I definitely leveled up my game, and the funny thing is, I was just reviewing one of my, my videos the other day about me not upgrading like one of my early on videos. And it almost seems like anytime I upgrade, I say I'm not going to upgrade anymore. So what I'm saying now is I don't think I'm going to upgrade for a little bit. <laughs> I think I'm pretty well set. Um, yeah. It's, it's awesome. I never thought that I would have a setup like this. And this, this really is special to me. Especially now that I'm actually doing a career field that I love. So having a setup here at the home is is awesome. And not just a setup, but a it's a studio. There there's no ifs, ands, or buts about it. This is a studio and it's cool. It might not be, you know, uh treated or anything as far as um noise cancellation or noise reduction that is. But as far as the setup wise, yeah this is Never thought I would have a studio like this, and it's cool. But other than that, yeah, I'm looking forward to making new videos with you guys, and I'm hoping that you guys enjoy them. And till next time, guys. Cheers.